Hello and welcome to the very first seven days of science of the year. Coming up in the news this week, Megalodon could get up to a little argy-bargy with each other. Prehistoric people and chimpanzees have similar criteria for good stone tools. And a 4,000 year old murder mystery is not solved. Our top story this week is the discovery of possible evidence of megalodon individuals attacking and biting each other, as if everyone's favourite big dead fish couldn't get any cooler. The researchers analyse a small number of fossilised teeth from megalodon that preserve surface markings on them. These markings comprise of many shallow parallel gouges that are consistent made with the marks by the serrated edges of another megalodon tooth. It therefore seems that these teeth had been raked by another meg tooth, with all the fine serrations down their sides inflicting this pattern of damage. The size of the gouges, as well as the spacings between the lines, confirms that the injuries were most likely made by another megalodon. And in all the examples found of these markings, they were always on the inner side of the teeth. So how did these teeth become bitten by other megalodon teeth? The researchers state that it's possible these megalodon individuals accidentally bit their own teeth, maybe after they were not slightly out of place in their mouths while feeding. However, another idea is that these bitten teeth were the result of an antagonistic encounter between megalodon individuals. Perhaps two giant sharks ended up biting at each other during a feeding frenzy, or perhaps over mating rights or in a territorial dispute. Jaw-to-jaw -jaw aggression between modern great whites has been documented on occasion, so it's not out of the question that Megalodon might have engaged in such behaviour as well. Still, this scenario is very speculative and it's entirely possible that the teeth were just dislodged and accidentally bitten. But let's be honest, it's a lot of fun to think about two massive prehistoric sharks biting at each other's faces. In other paleontology news, we welcome a new species of ankylosaur from China. It dates back to the late Cretaceous between about 99 and 71 million years ago and has been named Tiangenosaurus chengi. It's known from a skull as well as another specimen preserving most of a skeleton. The paleontologist notes several characteristics of these fossils that show notable differences to other similarly aged ankylosaurs, therefore supporting their identification of this as a new species. It's a close relative of the already named Changenosaurus yongi, which was described in 1998, and so adds to the known diversity of these wonderful dinosaurs at this point in the Cretaceous of China. There's another new species of dinosaur named this week as a species of prehistoric bird was described which also comes from China. It's called Neobohyornis lamadongensis, and it would have lived about 119 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. It's known from a beautiful and almost complete skeleton that even preserves the traces of the feathers around the bones. It's a member of an entirely extinct lineage of birds called the Enantheornithines, which were the most successful of the early diverging bird groups. It's notably much smaller than the other Enantheornithines it was related to, but it has fused bones indicating it was fully grown, so this was just a very small species, about the size of a New World blackbird. Another remarkable fossil discovery to finish off 2024. Also in the recent news, a fascinating new study has been published noting some similarities between the way that prehistoric hominins and modern chimpanzees select their stone tools. Researchers documented the patterns of selectivity among chimps in Guinea as they chose stone tools to crack nuts. They experimented with their selection techniques by introducing some specific rock types that the chimps had not seen before, and observed how they chose the ones they wanted to use based on the rock's mechanical properties. Which is very interesting, as these properties are not directly visible to the chimps. The chimps chose harder stones to use as hammers, while softer ones were used as anvils. The adult chimps were seen to work out these mechanical properties through individual learning, while juveniles often reused the same tools that adults had been using. Remarkably, their selectivity patterns were similar to those of some of the oldest known hominin tool makers, based on analysis of a two million year old site in Kenya, where these ancient human relatives also had been choosing certain rock types to use for specific purposes. A truly amazing study, showing just how similar some of our closest living relatives are to our ancient ancestors. 
Next up in the news for this week, the ancient bones of at least 37 people have been found to have died a violent death, butchered and possibly eaten around 4,200 to 4,000 years ago. This new study has analysed an assemblage of remains found in the 1970s Charterhouse Warren in the UK. The bones displayed numerous cut marks and fractures made around the time of death, suggesting the intentional butchering and perhaps subsequent consumption of these people. Their remains were then thrown down a 15 metre deep shaft, where they were discovered in the 70s. The victims consisted of men, women and children, predominantly local, suggesting the assemblage represented a community. While there have been hundreds of human skeletons found in Britain dating to between 4,500 and 3,500 years ago, the direct evidence of violence on these bones is rare. It stands in contrast to the normal funerary rites for the period before you even take the evidence of trauma and butchery into account, and so has been interpreted as a single violent event. The treatment and possible consumption of the victims was likely to dehumanise them, but why exactly they were killed has not yet been uncovered. The remains have been interpreted thus far as the result of a single massacre of a community, bringing into question the view that early Bronze Age Britain was relatively peaceful. Work is still ongoing, so hopefully there will be more news soon. Lastly, to begin the new year on a hopeful note, let's take a look at some of the positive climate stories of 2024. Australia is the second largest coal exporter in the world, but its largest bank, the Commonwealth Bank, announced in August of this year that they will no longer lend money to fossil fuel companies that do not align with the Paris Agreement, which aims to keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. Also, the 2024 Clean Energy Australia report stated that renewables now make up 40% of Australia's electricity supply. This is about 10% higher than the previous year, with rooftop solar being the biggest driver of this increase. Another win for the environment came in October, when Britain closed its last coal power station. Between January and October 2024, wind power was the largest source of energy for the UK for 7 out of 10 months, providing around 25-30% to of its total energy supply. It's a similar story in India, where coal is no longer the country's biggest source of energy and the share of power provided by coal dropped below 50% for the first time since the 1960s. The use of solar energy to produce electricity in the country is on the increase. Brazil is making great strides to combat deforestation. In January 2024, it was reported by the BBC that deforestation in the Amazon was 50% less in 2023 compared to the previous year, which is fabulous news. In the US, private investment into clean energy and electric vehicles was at a record-breaking $71 billion US dollars in the first quarter of 2024, which is around 40% higher than the first quarter of 2023. The largest portion of this investment at $31 billion US dollars was from people buying electric cars, solar panels, energy storage and heat pumps for their homes. So, progress is already being made, albeit slowly, but let's stay positive as 2025 begins. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you have a fantastic 2025 and we look forward to all the fun stuff we've got planned. If you enjoyed this episode, do feel free to subscribe and give us a like if you think we enjoyed it. And a special thank you to all of those who are able to support us on Patreon, including Corey Peterson, Andrew Kawam, Giotist, Clara Middleton, Dravshri Vastava, Gary Arrington, Lena Rose, Medicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Bulzak, Robert Thomas, Sammy Voss, Sanaforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Timothy N. Tedro, and Troy Schmidt. The next monthly roundup video is pretty much done. I've just got a couple more things to polish off, so hopefully it should all be with you in the next couple of days. That's it from me this week, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday.